How to identify hyperbolic geometry in the wild. Sign 1. Flattenability. The first step to identifying hyperbolic geometry is by looking for curvature. If there is positive curvature, it means the surface is converging, and if we add negative curvature, then the surface must diverge. But curvature alone isn't enough. For example, a cylinder has positive curvature, but actually it's a rectangle in disguise. Any shape that can be made from paper is Euclidean. This is why crochet is one of the only ways to see the hyperbolic plane, because non-Euclidean surfaces are unflattenable. Like this ball, it's positively curved all over. Any point on the ball starts small, gets big, and then converges again, up and down, kind of like a sine function. Now imagine the opposite of a ball, a surface with negative curvature that diverges everywhere. That is hyperbolic space. Sine 2. Hyperbolic functions. Area in hyperbolic space follows the hyperbolic functions, which are just two exponentials that are stuck together. This represents how the hyperbolic plane expands in all directions to infinity. If you cut or fold a hyperbolic surface, you'll see the outline of cosh, the hyperbolic version of cosine. These functions show why hyperbolic space needs to curl up to fit into Euclidean space, because it has exponentially more area. Sign 3. Crenellations. These pretty curls are called crenellations, and they're a good indicator that something hyperbolic is going on. This is the most stable way for hyperbolic geometry to fit into Euclidean space. Each of these little curves build in each other, like a wibbly-wobbly fractal, letting the whole surface diverge. If you spot two or more of these signs, then congratulations, you've likely found a hyperbolic surface. Now get ready to start seeing these curves everywhere.